Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And you know what? Today is our day of intercessory prayer. It is a day that we go before the Lord and we intercede on your behalf. For those who are part of our listening audience, as well as those who are part of our viewing audience. I believe that there are some things that are happening, and it should not take the church by surprise. But we must be aware of what's going on in the times. We are in a time, and I believe, that God wants to speak to the true church, the true believers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He wants to talk to us. He wants to, uh, he wants our eyes to be open, and he does not want us to be caught off guard, but to be made aware of the times. And on this day of intercessory prayer, I just really want to encourage the heart and mind of the true church. If there is a work that you uh, have been putting off, a work that you um, were supposed to do for the Lord, I want to encourage you not to delay. That's right. Don't delay what it is that you're supposed to do for the Lord. Don't delay. Get in a hurry. If there is something that you're supposed to do for the sake of the kingdom, don't delay. Because the time is now. And we all know that the next moment is not promised to us. And you don't want that time to pass by. And I'm, 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 I'm using my words carefully because uh, this is precious. The Word of God is precious. The work of God that we do is precious. And we've delayed it for so long. Don't go another second, another moment without doing what you are called to do. The next moment is not promise. The time is now. So much is going on upon the earth. Lives, souls are at stake. And there are many who are crying, Lord, Lord. But not everyone is crying unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not everyone who is confessing Christ to be their Savior are actually referencing the only begotten Son of God. And so the time that we are in now is, is so precious. It's uh, We cannot take it for granted. There is, there is not an opportunity to delay your assignment. And, and I feel this so strong in my spirit as I'm sharing this with you. And, and so I'll say it again. There is no longer um, an opportunity. There's no longer space 
for you to delay your assignment. If you have been given a mandate of an assignment from God, you know that you've received the instructions by the Holy Spirit. You know that you have been given the release to do a work. I, I urge you, I encourage you in this hour, the time is now. Uh, no longer put a delay to what God called you to do. Because the opportunity might not come around again. We are in a time now that time is, it, it's so precious, we can't afford to waste it. We can't afford to waste time and we can't afford to give it away. And what I mean by can't afford to give it away, I'm not telling you to charge for your assignment. I'm telling you, you cannot afford to uh, give the time away to idleness. You can't afford to um, sit by and, and think that you have all this time in the world to do what God has called you to do. You have run out of delaying the assignment. And, and, and that was not my message today. Um, but I thank the Holy Spirit for his guidance. Uh, you have run out of time to delay your assignment. And I speak that prophetically um, to you. And, and I am the first partaker of that word. I, I'll say it again. You have run out of time to delay your assignment. And I don't know where you are. And, and, and I don't know what the delay has been. But I want to tell you that you have run out of time to delay your assignment. It is time to get to work and do what you were called to do. The mandate that has been placed upon your life. It is time to get to work. If you have tuned in, you've tuned into The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. It is our honor and it is our pleasure to come and spend some time in the Word of God with you. We thank God for the many platforms that He has given us and we welcome each and every one of our new listeners um, through the extension of the platforms, whether it is through Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Reason FM, Podcast Addict, Deezer, Tumblr, YouTube Radio, the list goes on and on. We thank God for your attendance. And I definitely uh, take into consideration our day of intercessory prayer. This is the day that we intercede on your behalf. We don't have to know you personally. I know that there is something that God wants to do in your life. And I pray that we come into agreement and alignment through humility and obedience that you will allow his perfect will to be done in your life. And we also pray for our viewing audience, for those who have subscribed to our channels with Roku, as well as Fire TV and Vimeo. And we also have a YouTube channel for the television ministry. Yesterday, we shared intent on prayer. I encourage you, if you are a watchman, other known as a seer, to take a look at that particular teaching, intent on prayer. It is airing on our Roku network on Thursday at 11.30 a.m., also, uh, it is available now via our YouTube channel as well as Vimeo and Fire TV. But today, we're going to take a look at the time. And that word, 
there is no more opportunity for delay in your assignment. Align yourself to do the will of God because there are souls waiting. There is a harvest waiting and also there is a need of intercessory prayer to reveal some strongholds that are at work. Truly the heart, there is a huge harvest. People are looking for truth. People need to know the truth and, 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 and there is a need for submissive, willing vessels of honor that will align themselves to do the will of the Lord and those that will carry out his will, those who he knows he can trust with his word to carry it out and to deliver it where it needs to go. And so I say to you, I plead to you, I urge you, if you have been given a mandate of an assignment, if you know that you have been putting off what you have been, been instructed to do for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, I urge you with every fiber within me, no longer can you delay. There are no more delays. The time is now. The time is now for you to step out and begin to do what God has called you to do, to do the work of the Lord, to proclaim the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do not add to it. Do not take from it. But speak what you hear from Holy Spirit today because he's about to put a word in your mouth from heaven, from our Father which is in heaven that will set the captive free. And I urge you right now in the name of Jesus, but that if you would gird up your loins and that if you would get ready, oh, get yourself prepared, put on the whole armor of God. Don't worry about what you're going to say, but God has a word for you to give. You keep contemplating and saying, I don't have anything to say. And you're absolutely right. You don't have anything to say. You don't have anything to reveal, but God does. And if you would just get in the right position, which is the position of go, get in the position of go and do what the word of the Lord says. Open up your mouth, and when you begin to open up your mouth, he's going to release what he wants to say. But he needs you to stop putting it off. Stop putting the delay. There is no more opportunity for delay. The time is now. Your time is now for you to release to your audience, to those who God wants you to speak to, at this appointed hour, the time is now. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time now that 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 captives can be set free. That those who are blinded, uh, it is a time for them to come into the light so that they're no longer spiritually blinded. It is a time now that those who have been spiritually deaf, uh, that their ears are open, that they can now hear. But you are holding the word that they need to hear. And so that's why you can no longer delay. Amen. You can no longer delay your assignment. The time is now. I want to share with you some scripture texts. And it is found over in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the coming apostasy. Right now, we are living in some very, very dangerous times because some are crying, Lord, Lord, and their heart is far from it. And so those who will stand on the side of righteousness, those who will stand for the truth, it is your time for you to blow the trumpet, for you to sound the trumpet, for you to speak. Uh, because deceit is loud, but the truth has to be louder. There's something about the truth. The truth cannot be tainted. 
uh, the truth must prevail. So let's read this word. And before I touch the word, let's have prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I submit myself unto you, you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service. I ask you right now that if you would search my hearts and that if you would try my thoughts, uh, if you would find anything in me that is not pleasing unto you, I ask you right now that you would remove it from me, uh, that I may walk in righteousness and that I may do which is right in your sight. I ask you, Lord God, that you remove me from my flesh, Lord God, from my carnality, and that I may walk in the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and that I may be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. This we ask of the Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to take a look at two areas of Scripture. I want to take a look at 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and then I want to go over to Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and then I'm going to also go into the sixth chapter. It reads as follows, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, uh, in, uh, uh, incon content, inconsistent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We're in that time now. We are in that time where people are having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. And when I say that, once again, saying, Lord, Lord, but their heart is far from Him being their Lord and Savior. Putting on um, this form of godliness and, 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 and saying, God, but their formation of God is not the God that is in heaven. And it is deceitful. And if we are not aware, if the truth does not stand, if the truth, true church does not put on their armor, the whole armor of God, and stand for righteousness, many will fall away. And so, first, let us submit ourselves unto God. Let us examine ourselves and let us examine our relationship with God. Make sure that we are in a right place with Him. And it is time to, to truth must prevail. Truth is strong. But when truth stands up, when truth does not stand up, deceit has the floor. I'm going to say that again. When truth does not stand up, deception has the floor. And so you have the word, it's nigh thee even in thy mouth. That is Romans, the 10th chapter. What, what say ye now, the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth, that if you would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you have the word. But for some reason, there has been a delay in the releasing of what you were instructed to release. 
and you can no longer hold back on the instructions you have received. You've already received the instructions. You've already been told what to do, when to do it, how. You have already received everything. The word is nigh thee. But for some reason, there has been a delay. Sometimes, we as a people, we want to walk lightly and we want to water down and sugarcoat because we do not want to offend others. When you give the word of God as he instructs it, there is going to be some correction. Uh, there is going to be some cutting because the word of God is a double-edged sword. But as he cuts, there is a balm. There is a healing. When he exposes sin throughout scripture, he clearly says, if you return unto me, I will return unto you. And so just because the sin has been exposed does not mean that there is not an opportunity for restoration and forgiveness. There is. And so be if your delay has been because you don't want to expose sin, you don't want to call out the sin, you have the wrong agenda. There is an opportunity for forgiveness and reconciliation. But I'm going to say this, whenever truth does not stand up, deception has the floor. And if you have been given a mandate, an assignment to do, and you fail to do it, and those who you were instructed to speak to if you do not do that and their lives are lost, their souls are lost, that's going to be on your hand. That's going to, you, you have to, you're going to have to answer to that in that day. I often hear my father, Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. say, what did you do with God's word? He gave you the word. It is nigh thee even in thy mouth. He gave Jer Jeremiah the word. He told him to eat the word. The word was in him. It was like fire in his bones. But what are we doing with the word? There is no more time for delay. It is not. And I know that Sometimes you can say, well, Pastor Angel, that's, that's a little hard and harsh. Listen, souls are at stake. There's no time to sugarcoat, to make you feel good and pat you on the back. I am encouraging you. I love you without measure, simply because I believe in the potential in you. But there is a work to be done upon the earth. There is a work. And listen, listen when I say this. Don't let your delay be based off of how you feel in your body. Because the enemy is going to send all kinds of tactics and distractions to put off what it is that you're supposed to do for the kingdom of heaven. And listen. I don't feel well every day. If you only knew that every single Tuesday, it's our day of intercessory prayer. And as I was meditating earlier today, resting up, I began to look over and I said, Lord, every Tuesday, the enemy attacks me. It's my day of intercessory prayer. But do I give in to that attack? No. I do not. Now, I use common sense. 
I use wisdom, but I also recognize every single Tuesday. I say, Lord, I would love on a Tuesday that I wake up that I am refreshed and energized and listen. And then after we do an assignment, whatever it is I'm supposed to do, especially for, for, for radio ministry, our day of intercessory prayer, when I am done, the majority of the times, and it has happened so often, when I am off the air, listen, I am rejuvenated, I am refreshed, but prior to, I'm saying, what is going on? But I know that it is the attack of the enemy. I know that. He does not want me to carry out what it is I'm supposed to carry out. So I cannot base, I can't do a delay based off of how I feel. Now, I'm going to say this again. I have common sense and I have godly wisdom. And I also recognize the attack of the enemy. I do. But what I'm saying to you today is get in a hurry about your assignment. Let truth stand. Let the true gospel of Jesus Christ stand. Do the work that you were called to do. If you're called to be an evangelist, learn about it and evangelize. Do what you are called to do. Allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate you and mold you and make you for this mantle. And do your assignments. They are assignments. God has some work to do on the earth, and he does it through vessels, willing vessels of honor. That's you and I. But we can't delay. Oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. No. For some, your time is up for putting it off. For some... If you don't do the work now, you're not going to get another opportunity. This is your time now to be partakers of the work for the kingdom of heaven. This is your time now. What did you do? What did you do with the word of God that's in you? So as we're looking at this in the last days, what does that mean? What does that mean? I know that, you know, for years and years, we've been hearing that. And some might say, oh, I heard that when I was a child and now I'm 40 and 50. But take a look about the atmosphere now. Look at it now. And you will definitely see We are experiencing some things we've never experienced before. I am 48. And let me tell you something. What's going on now? I never heard about it. Not in this nation. Not in the United States. I never heard about it. I'm not saying that it, it, it didn't happen in other areas. But it is now happening here in the United States. And everything that's going on, you can no longer say or feel detached from what's going on because everybody upon the earth, whether you want to be affected by it or not, you are affected by it. I have never seen, I have never heard of things that are going on now. The hypocrisy the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Such division, deception, 
lies. And everybody says they're right. Well, if everybody is right, why is there such division? I'm going to tell you why. Because deception is at work. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of the darkness of this world in spiritual places. And if you look closely, you can really, really see between the lines. You can see behind, I like to call it the smoke screen, the spirit of deception. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, but your right spews out hate, lies, and deception, and that is not the way of God. So we have to be careful of what we agree to and what we adhere to. But for those, and I'm speaking specifically to those who have delayed your assignment to stand and proclaim the true gospel of Jesus Christ, you no longer have an option for a delay. Your time is now. You will not have another opportunity if you do not do your work now. There are no more delays. You cannot put it off any longer. Listen. Even if you are on your dying bed, if you got to give a word, you give that word. Because we are going to be judged by what we did with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The last days of salvation history begin at Pentecost. That's over in Acts, the second chapter, and will be concluded with the second coming of Christ. Paul prophesies through the Holy Spirit that evil in the world will accelerate and intensify as the end approaches. Isn't that what's happening now? Evil is accelerating and it is intensifying. As the conclusion of the last days approaches, there will be a widespread collapse of the moral structure of the family and of society in general as people are arrogant lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. These times will be especially grievous and trying for God's true servants. Listen. Buckle down in God. Examine yourself and your relationship with him. Build your faith. Stand on the word of God, the true word of God. In all you're getting, get an understanding. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Look all around you. If you've just tuned in, you've tuned in to The Balance of Life, and I am Pastor Angel Ferguson. I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited about you, and you are in our prayers. I am praying for those who have an assignment to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pray for the ministers that you will have an open door to minister the word of God and that you will have liberty, that there were no hindrances, no roadblocks, but that the word that you are to deliver 
that it fall on good ground. I pray for you. I encourage you that you are strengthened and that you are renewed in the spirit of your mind. I pray for the clarity of your hearing, fine tuning in hearing the Holy Spirit. I pray for your time of study that you will show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. I pray for a refreshing of oil upon your lives. And as you continue to pour out what it is you're supposed to pour out, that you will be renewed and replenished. That is our desire for you. If you've just tuned, we're talk, tuned in, we're talking about the time. And so when I thought about this, when I, I heard the message, the time, I was looking at the end times. But I feel in my spirit to, to just send a warning out to those who have been given an assignment and you have delayed it and delayed it and delayed it and delayed it. Listen, your time of delay has run out. Get in a hurry to do what God has called you to do. Get in a hurry. Do the will of the Lord. Speak what you are instructed to speak. Do what you are instructed to speak by the Holy Spirit. Because there is a great harvest. If you are one to encourage the believers, listen, do that. Intercede on behalf of the believers, do that. Pray for the lost, do that. Feed the hungry, do that. Fast, do it according to God's will. According to God's way. Do that. Work to continue to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is the will of God. So Paul issues the warning that within organized, organized Christianity, many will have a form of godliness, which is hypocritical religion, but will deny the power of the gospel that produces genuine godliness. So instead of us criticizing how one ministers, worships, serves, let's pray ye one for another that we all may be healed because nobody is perfect. We all have some areas that we can definitely grow in. Acknowledge how we can do what we do. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can do absolutely nothing. Without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, without his instructions, without his directions, without him uh, giving me a revelation, listen, I can't do it. As a matter of fact, I can't do it and I don't want to try to do it. I want to do the things that are pleasing unto my father which is in heaven I can't get to my father in heaven unless I go through his son and whom I believe in and have accepted him as my Lord and Savior and so just looking over some things that written down in this tablet that I have always writing and I wrote something down that said am I working with God are we working with him because I don't want to have a form of godliness and deny his power am I working with him how do I work with him by inquiring at his temple. I work with him 
by finding out what it is that he wants me to do. I don't want to do something and then invite him and ask him to convert to my plan. Mm -mm. He already has a plan. I want to work with him. I want to do it his way. Because if I do it his way, when I do it his way, listen, there is a great and expected end. That great expected end is that the unbeliever will become the believer. And that the believer will grow stronger in him. I want to work with him. Let's take a look over now in Hebrews. Let's go on down to, let's look at the sixth chapter. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and bearers it rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned, those are the ones who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. So let us take into an account our relationship. Take into an account your assignment. What have you delayed? What have you put off? What have you just kept telling yourself that you have all this time? And with notions of, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next month. I'll do it when this happens. I'll do it when my children become adults, when my children, you know, grow up. When am I going to do it? If you have continued to delay your assignment, your time is now. There is no more time to delay. What is in you is needed now. And don't get me wrong. God will find a willing vessel. His will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. It shall be done. But I don't want you to get to that day of judgment. And you have to give an account of what you did upon the earth. And you have these list of assignments that, listen, you didn't even touch. You ignored. You delayed. Oh, God, and when you delay them long enough, sometimes you forget about them. And every now and then you'll send a reminder. Well, this is the reminder from our Father, which is in heaven, under the direction of the Holy Spirit. This is your reminder. That you got some work to do that you have not done. And I encourage you to get in a position to get to work. We love you. If the Lord prolongs his return and he allows us to, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll share with you some uh, tools from Bible study, faith building. Have a blessed day, everyone. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.